to apples. Just, just before I forget, I started recording. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first questions, guys. Uh, um, uh, did anyone prepare materials? What is different between generations? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> The teacher is no. online. <laughs> yeah, and no one is ready. <laughs> and like, it's, it's, just... it's your fault. You were showing us this, enticing us with this picture. We forgot to prepare the material. <laughs> and and your heads? Did you don't, did you forget? <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I've no, got I've got body. something here. I've got something here. Okay. So let, let's let's Google. Let's Google. Yeah. Baby boomers. Baby boomers. Um nineteen forty six to nineteen sixty four. Uh known for their significant population increase following World War Two. They experienced significant cultural changes and played a significant role in shaping modern society. They certainly think so. Okay. Generation X, 1965 to 1979. Um, born after the baby boomers and before the millennials, they are known as being independent, adaptable, and tech savvy, having grown up during the technician during the transition from analog to digital. Uh, they're often characterized by their pragmatic approach to work life and family. Millennials, 1980 to 1994. Um, they are known for being independent, adaptable, and tech savvy. That's exactly the same thing. Uh, are often characterized by their... Pra hmm. Yeah, they've just copied from Gen X. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, Gen Z... Um, Digital natives growing up with constant access to technology and the internet. Um, strong sense of social activism, poised to reshape many aspects of society and culture as they come of age, 1996 to 2010. And okay, guys, who we got? Uh, who is here? I am a millennial, but I grew up in Ukraine. So I am Ukrainian millennial because uh, after I will have told you some moments what makes uh, Ukrainian millennials different because we grew up in very specific uh, moment of uh, history of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I'm a millennial as well. Also a millennial. <clears throat> me either what does it mean millennia millennial is if you were born between 1980 and 1995 uh-huh me too yeah everyone else is too shy to say <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, we have a millennials party. <laughs> yeah, it's a millennial party. Yes. <laughs> okay, so oh. <laughs> it's it's a it's good because like we have a lot of common uh, 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 stuff things. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of common experience because <laughs> so it will be very funny and. Uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe I will start. Yes. Uh, okay, N Ukrainian millennials. Uh, Vitaly, you will uh, uh, add something. Uh, so uh, 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 be with me. Be with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, <here>. I. <laughs> Thank you for presenting here. <laughs> no. I was born in 1989, so I was born when the Soviet Union existed. He, it died, died, was in process, but <laughs> still existed. So, uh, uh, so I grew up uh, in the 90s, so 
what I remember is when I uh, saw in the first time Ukrainian money, Grivna, and like it's uh, what, and what like, about coupons? Uh, yeah, before it was coupons because uh, after a collapse of Soviet Union, we d didn't have actually money. So mm -hmm. only after a few years, we will have a hryvna, our um, Ukrainian money. And <laughs> hryvna, uh, for hryvna, it, it appeared in 1996. And before that, we had a period with coupons where everyone were millionaires. Like you had a million of coupons. And that a million became a ch 10 hryvnas after the money reform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's a very uh, uh, struggle. It, uh, for example, my mom has had a lot of problems because she had two kids and like she didn't ha get uh, pay uh, uh, on uh, her workplace. And uh, um, instead of money, she got uh, a milk. Like, like she brought 10 liters of milk <laughs> instead of payment. <laughs> it was a very harsh uh, period of Ukrainian history. And like uh, I grew up when uh, Ukraine become a, a state, when Ukraine got uh, its constitution, when Ukraine got first president elections when uh, started first protests long time before orange revolution long time before uh, uh, revolution of dignity <clears throat> in 90s uh, um, uh, donetsk uh, donbass uh, uh, miners uh, protested on maidan uh, of independence and it was first protests uh, uh, and uh, like you, <laughs> when Ukrainians have opportunity to protest, they will protest. <laughs> yeah, and actually, as actually before that, there was a marble revolution. It was uh, before uh, Uni uh, United United Soviet Union uh, cracked, and uh, it was in. Uh, 1990 i guess i don't really remember the the, the year uh, it was before all the stroke uh, strikes of uh, miners and that was the uh, the biggest uh, strike in, uh, the biggest uh, revolution in uh, soviet union so um, students just uh, brought their um, some mottos uh, with them on Maidan, and that was the first Maidan, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, that you did your homework, yes? <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> I watch her good evening a lot. <laughs> um, uh, also, what we got, what we got in uh, this uh, period of time oh, oh my god i forgot this information um first president elections uh, protests uh, uh, grievances mm. mm. what else what else vitaly do you remember anything in this period of time i remember severe lack of everything in shops mm -hmm. uh, i remember uh the same as uh, yana told that uh, there were no salaries in money but there were salaries in some goods uh mm -hmm. what I, what whatever the mm, <clears throat> the institution that uh, a person worked in uh, could afford themselves like yes, they exchange some goods with other uh, un uh, entrepreneurships uh, like uh, 
everyone had salary uh, they could that it could be uh, uh some uh, coal it could be some uh, metal or something else it could it could be whatever some clothing and people exchange those goods you know, between one another and for uh, if you if you wanted to uh, some um, domestic work to be done uh, the main currency was actually vodka that time yes yeah and after we had like literally epidemic of uh, alcoholism in ukraine so we mm -hmm. it will be problem on that time uh, so also 90s what we got we got a uh, first western movies <laughs> like predator so, so operas. <laughs> so, so, so operas yes yeah, oh my god uh, we got first uh, ukrainian channels like one two plus one or you know, channel first national channel uh, and like um, it was period when we got everything in ukrainian language we had first a musician program uh, it's called territoria a when uh, where a young mus ukrainian musician made um, first video clips for their songs it's it's uh, like in 90s ukrainian had a lot of this Mm, feelings of new opportunities. Yes, we didn't have money, any, but we feel this uh, uh, that we finally uh, got a chance to show ourselves to the world. So it's like it was a harsh period. Like you don't have anything, no clothes, no stuff, no money, but you have a lot of desire to make anything new. <clears throat> and also, I saw first in my life is it's a Tamagotchi. If you remember the story, <laughs> I wanted it so hard. I wanted this toy, but my mom uh, didn't have money to bought it uh, to me. So yeah. Um, instead, I have cats and dogs and goats and chickens. <laughs> So and you had, you had real, real pets instead of an electronic pet. Yes, yes. So uh, if you want to share your uh, uh, experience of mil uh, young millennials in your country, what you have instead of Ukrainians, please, I want to and hear you. Actually, I want to add something uh, besides all this... Uh renaissance that uh, i can call this this way so it was really a renaissance of uh, ukraine ukraine itself of you everything ukrainian of economics it was uprising of it uh, besides that uh, the criminal um, atmosphere was very very severe at that, that time and a lot of people and there were a lot of um punks and a lot of uh, bands that time and many people suffered from them and there were a lot of um, criminal like way of making business uh, there were like mafias uh, all over the country and i can i can say about crimea it was very tough that time that you could uh, just uh, be uh, killed for a very small amount of money that time. You know, guys, now I understood that uh, I'm not um, learning because I was born in uh, 1998. Oh. <laughs> So you um, missed this exciting this. Um... So you'll be sharing <laughs> the next generation how your child was childhood was in uh, zeros in mill uh, after yes. millennia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But uh, you know, uh, my mom uh, told me that uh, when was the period uh, when coupon changed changed uh, to greenness. 
and uh, uh, it was the last day when they uh, had an opportunity to buy something by coupon and uh, she told me uh, that uh, she earned uh, some money and um, uh, you know at that time uh, uh, was the very uh, fashionable uh, hat uh, from um, uh, from um, uh, from uh, fur and uh, mm -hmm. that time uh, she bought uh, that hat uh, and uh, was hat? Uh, so fashionable <laughs> 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 I don't know what animal it was. <laughs> <laughs> what do yeah, they call uh, those hats? What what? What what are those hats called? Is there a special name for them? The fur hats? Fur hats, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, you uh, saw uh, this hat. I I you uh, um I sent I'll send a photo. And like um sides of this hat show your social status. So if, if your husband <laughs> bought your like more fluffy mufuri this hat, is that a higher social status you had in your <laughs> group of people? <laughs> Oh, and that, that hat was, was, was really disgusting. I don't know why they were so popular. But uh, you know, the, the most of you them know? were of sables. Uh, but what is the name of this uh, hat? Sorry, in Ukrainian. Google, what is Google it? says it's Ushanka. Uh, sable hat. Sable hat. Uh, sable hat. Yeah. Uh, okay, Shapka, uh, it's, not, it's not it's not Ushanka. Ushanka is more uh, is a Russian hat. It has uh, those ears that you can cover mm -hmm. your ears with, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not it. Uh, it's like a nest on your head. It's very ugly. It's yeah. uh... <laughs> okay. And but you uh, know for, that uh, uh, fashion, fashion is coming back, and uh, now such hats uh, are coming popular modern oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it's like when jeans with low waist waist uh, bags oh my god it's like oh we <laughs> did everything to prevent back of this <laughs> clothes <laughs> be grateful to millennials <laughs> <laughs> We have that memory that they are ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and we also remember the other thing that it won't be that popular in Ukraine, that uh, uh, former president, traitor president of Ukraine, Yanukovych, uh, stole those hats in 90s. Yes! It's yeah. funny stories! <laughs> he stole them? Yeah, in the nest, it, it was, was even, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He picked uh, and the... uh, hats uh, from uh, hats of women in uh, public bathroom. What? Uh, okay. Oh my god, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he gave them to his wife or what? Um, I don't know. Maybe he sold them. Oh my god. It wasn't the only one. It was several. Okay. That was his way of making business. <laughs> oh my god! And and you know that it is. Uh, it was the first president of Ukraine uh, who, uh, who was in prison, and uh, because I, I don't know because of that hat or no or yeah, it was something yeah. else. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the, he had he had actually two sentences uh, for uh, the robbery uh, and for uh, some mafia business. Mm. Okay. Same ra some racket. 
<laughs> Ukraine's history is very interesting and unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I believe yes, that like a, every uh, country has uh, something uh, like that. Uh, uh, also, we have this like phrase that um, Ukraine has unexpected past. <laughs> I find this picture with has, this hat. I find it. Uh, I will mm-hmm. show you now. Okay. You can speak about everything else. Like, uh, I will just how, show you. The... How much costs one of these hats, for example? If it's, like, very good quality, how much? I, I don't know because, like, my mom didn't have it because, like, we were mm-hmm. very poor. We were very poor. Oh, now? That's why you, mean, you, you mean now or uh, yes, that time? Yes, now. Now. I, I understand uh, now how this works. I, I, can see, I can see it's uh, on the uh, Google uh, shop or I don't know. Uh, it's uh, like 50 bucks. Just beware. You <laughs> what can buy it for 50 look bucks. Like? <laughs> Looks like... <laughs> Just oh my don't, God. yes, just don't oh my... give this to back. It's just, I, I beg you. <laughs> oh, here, here, here we have uh, for uh, 200 bucks and for uh, 120 bucks uh, approximately. Mm-hmm. So in this picture that you, that you share all the women who are wearing hats, it's like a symbol of yes. status. Yes, yes, and like you can see that this hat was worn even in the building inside. So okay. it was... Especially <laughs> inside. Yes, to show <laughs> on the weddings, that... On the weddings, and yeah. uh, <laughs> even if it's hot. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. We have some... We don't have this thing with hat, but we have it with other... Um clothes or items of dress uh okay so i see some some women without hat like three of them without a hat okay <laughs> okay so what about the makeup uh, of this women <laughs> oh <laughs> It's like it's uh, 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 blue shadows, blue green shadows, and like uh, oh. they uh, were like I remember the smell of uh, lipstick and of um, when you on your eyelashes uh, put like uh, what's its na- na- name mascara. mascara mascara and it was dry, so women split on this uh, on this mascara. <laughs> <laughs> to make some makeup. <laughs> it wasn't nineties. It was eighties. Was even seventies. Uh, it was uh, in Soviet Union. But yes. uh, but after Soviet uh, collapse, uh, so we didn't have actually anything for makeup. As it's why uh, yeah we also, we, yeah. we used this uh, dry mascara and I remember how my mom mom uh, uh, dressed it up for uh, some party and uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> make this weird uh, moves to make this uh, mascara uh, again wet. <laughs> uh, sports youths, but of a very, very strange colors, like uh, uh, turquoise one, or uh, uh, pink one, or uh, something that is very, very, um, we say it poisonous, like the poisonous color that is very, very... Uh, Right Flam- and flamboyant, uh, uh, like like toxic waste ring. This <laughs> yeah, almost yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I, we had the same and, and actually. Were, uh, the, uh, pa- pa- uh, pants of that, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean trousers or of that uh, color and many uh, clothing of this color. Mm-hmm, they were mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Soviet Union. Everything mm-hmm. was gray, was brown, was black, mm-hmm. and very mm-hmm. uh, uncolorful. And uh, when color is stopped to be bound uh, to wear, uh, and all that uh, Turkish and Chinese and uh, goods from other countries uh, came to Ukraine, everyone uh, tried to pick the most colorful one. Okay, I, I think it 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 was like. Uh... Well, I, I, I was born in 1986, 
So uh, some of the things I I remember, but others don't. But I remember like when I was a child growing up, I remember these clothes, like uh, soup, like um, uh, this shiny pink, uh, this toxic waste uh, green. But mm -hmm. I and I and I remember them from from the magazines and the models were wore like their head like super fluffy. They look like poodles or something. Uh, mm -hmm. and there was this haircut I didn't like it that men used uh, uh, let me find a picture for you because I don't know how to how to explain uh, this uh, in in English actually we had a famous uh, Mexican singer and I will share the well now this is when he was old, when he was younger maybe I I need to find he, he's from the 80s and I need to find like his haircut. I hate that haircut, but it was super famous uh, in this in this era. I don't know if you had like similar <laughs> haircuts in in Ukraine, but uh, these was it called uh, a mullet? A mullet when it's short? Yeah, it was, yeah. just 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 Th these were two very famous Mexican singers, like from that e era. And uh, you can see the, the haircut like uh, with him. Mm -hmm. uh, people call him mm -hmm. El Buki. So, and, and, and the lady, of course. Uh, so this was like the static in that, in that era. And let me uh, look if I can find some pictures of clothing. Of clothes for you. All right. Like uh, this. Uh, and for example, in my country, yes, okay, yeah. If, if you were, if you were fashionable, like in that era, uh, you 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 will dress like I was small. I didn't dress like this, of course. But this is what we, wait, this is what we saw, like in the in the magazines, in the. It, it's it's like you are super super uh fashionable i don't know if you had similar clothes in ukraine for this period maybe not it was, it was like for a the richest kid in uh, yeah yeah this mm -hmm. is this is like if you are super rich you are like super trendy you dress like this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also uh, uh, in the 90s, uh, people used a very lot of this for styling uh, uh, hair. And uh, after this, I think we got this hole in ozone uh, layer. <laughs> layer. <laughs> because we used a lot of this spray <laughs> for styling. <laughs> yes. I, I remember like there were some even uh, special, um, how to say, uh, combs that you use for your hair just to make it like fluffier because I had a uh, ounce that were like, I was like, I, I don't know, like nine years old and they were like 15 years old and always combing their hair and, and dressing like this. So I remember this. Uh, then uh i believe like the uh fashion uh i think it, it 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 changed uh a bit let me see if i can find some pictures for you like about uh mexican artists of the time and i remember tamagotchis too it was like everyone in school had to have the tamagotchi if you didn't have the tamagotchi you were no one I never had a Tamagotchi, of course, because it was expensive as well. So so you could not, like, uh, not everyone could afford it. Uh, this was, like, uh, for example, there was this phenomenon in, in, in Mexico of uh, teenage groups. So, so these uh, people in this uh, picture that I will share, they were, like, a teenage group, really famous. And then now they've grown and they are like super recognized artists. But this is how they look. They were in fashion. They were hip. They were young. They were rich. And and they, and they look like that. Uh, I don't know. Do you have something similar in Ukraine? 
like this. We had phenomenon. the same times of bang, banks uh, uh, hair, uh, like uh, we did uh, some of the um, of our singers uh, uh, did the same hairstyle uh, mm -hmm. because like. Um, we uh, all read like first uh, Western magazines, and like we try to copy everything on these magazines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And actually, actually, uh, like fifteen years ago, uh, everyone told that uh, we are uh, behind the. Uh, international uh, way of uh, fashion or international way of thinking, we are like 30 years uh, behind everyone, like the modern uh, world, uh, the I, modern I it's, it's... Uh, society. But now it changed, and we are uh, in the same uh, on the same page. Yes, yes, and it so, always was. Uh, uh, Actually, uh, uh, just uh, I'm trying to make my point. Uh, all those uh, head haircuts and all their clothes, uh, all those clothes were popular in uh, United States, say, uh, in 80s. And uh, in Ukraine, they became popular in uh, late 90s. So there was uh, a real time gap between the mm -hmm, popularity mm -hmm. of those. Oh, only because of Soviet. Only because of yeah. Soviet Union, but if we had the opportunity to get some information about Western uh, style, uh, Western uh, or European, even European uh, fashion, I'm sure that we will get everything that they get. They yeah, have. but actually now we on this are on the same page. We are not behind yes. every anyone. So mm -hmm. cha uh, times yes. changed, and we are. <laughs> as modern as and... everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I, I remember at the, uh, 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 memories unblocked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember? Do you watch this uh, TV show Alf? Yes. Yeah. Elf. Yes. Yes. Oh, Alf. Oh. <laughs> and it's alien who always try to eat cats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, but I cat person, and I so struggle it every time when I watch this uh, TV show because, like, I was worried about they, their cat. <laughs> <laughs> and is this TV, this TV show, uh, yeah, this show was so popular in Ukraine that, that we still have these phrases like. 2023, uh, 24, sorry, 24. <laughs> but we still use these phrases from this uh, uh, TV show because it was very popular. It was very fresh. And like, oh, in 90s, we made a first Ukrainian uh, TV show. It was about um, uh, Roxolana. <laughs> Like it was very uh, cheap, but uh, Roxolana is a uh, wife of one of Sultan Suleiman. Mm -hmm. uh, she called it uh, Hurem. Um, you may watch uh, 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 Turkish TV show; it's also great. And uh, uh, Hurem Sultan was um, Ukrainian. She was stolen in Ukraine and bring to the Sultan's harem. And after, after she become a wife of Sultan, and uh, we have this uh, TV show about uh, her uh, uh, life uh, and how she become a Sultan. And it was one of the first uh, Ukrainian TV shows in the 90s. Can I ask I, a question? I, 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 I Sorry. Um, something Sorry. you said about like colored colored clothing being banned in the Soviet Union. Was it like strictly a law or was it just that people didn't want to stand out? Uh, for example, jeans were banned in Soviet Union. So if we, uh, you need to find a black market to buy some jeans because it was forbidden. 
and like uh, but uh, it was so popular so jeans cost like much much uh, um, uh, uh, like a lot of money in Soviet Union but uh, again I uh, wasn't born yet this I born uh, in time when the Soviet Union started to die <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe actually... because it because it's diet uh, because I was born you know <laughs> it knew you were coming yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and actually about jeans about jeans uh, that you could be uh, um, thrown out from the university or uh, some organization if you wear jeans. So the, the first thing that you couldn't buy it and you couldn't be on detention or even thrown out from university. As well, they were anti-Soviet, anti ah. uh, they were uh, like from uh, capital, uh, capitalistic world uh, that made harm and so on and so forth. So everyone should be standardized. Everyone should uh, wear Soviet clothing only, uh, wearing some very dull colors. That amazes Sorry, me how much time, yeah, how much time and money must have been spent on um, enforcing these ridiculous laws. It's amazing to me. Was it the same with books or music? Anything foreign? Yeah, there were uh, there were no uh, international uh, channels, TV channels mm -hmm. or radio mm -hmm. uh, channels, and uh, in some uh, uh, some of um, people who knew how to make radio, uh, they somehow adjusted their radio to listen to uh, radio for freedom. Uh, like American Project or to Voice of America uh, or to some Polish uh, radio stations, uh, especially in western part of Ukraine. Um, uh, it was also banned, so no, you, you could not uh, subscribe to any uh, international mag magazines or newspapers uh, mm -hmm. only from Soviet Union or from uh, those, uh, how they were called, republics or countries that uh, were on the Warsaw uh, Pact, under Warsaw Pact, like uh, Czechoslovakia, or Poland that time before uh, Polish uh, uh, revolution, I, I believe, uh, and bef before uh, the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall um, from the uh, eastern part of Germany only from the uh, Democratic Republic of, G of Germany, like uh, the um, the part of the Germany that was under uh, Soviet's uh, government. Mm -hmm. Wow! Oh my god! I, I I am listening to you say this, and I am trying to think of something similar nowadays. And and the only thing I can think of is maybe North Korea, Cuba, maybe something like that. Because and, uh, yeah, Cuba, more of a Cuba. <laughs> yeah, because for, for example, um, I I I met some uh Cuban guys and and they were telling me like exactly what you're telling telling me, like uh mm -hmm. for example um uh. Well, it was some years ago, but they told me like uh, they could not use uh, like uh, Skype, Zoom, nothing that was American. Like, I mean, like some messaging conference service. And in order to do that, in order to chat, uh, they had like to do something with the VPN connection or something. They, they knew how to do it because they were tech savvy and they like kind of tuned, like uh, pretending their connection was coming from Europe instead of from Cuba, so they could access these the services. So when when I listened to you telling all this, I I remember this guy. Wow. Sandy, yeah, uh, what was? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go on. 
Uh, Sandy, what was in uh, New Zealand in this time? Because it, it's another part of the planet. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't really tell you that because I didn't grow up in New Zealand. So um, mm, I don't I know. Grew up. <laughs> I grew up in Kenya. Uh, we Kenya? Left, yeah, well, we left Kenya when I was when in the year 2000 or 2001. Um, so I spent the nineties in Kenya and it was completely different to New Zealand. So I cannot, I couldn't tell you, but, um, those, those clothes look familiar. I think Kenya was quite influenced by American culture at, well, for young people anyway. So, uh, everyone, everyone dressed like, um, uh, American pop stars hip-hop stars that kind of thing um but there was a big um a huge huge wealth disparity there so there was people people who had lots and lots of money and people who had virtually nothing and that's changing now but um in the 90s it was a big problem so I can't but I can't tell you about New Zealand I think it was um probably pretty similar to to England and, and, and Western Europe. Oh. In in Mexico, um I I try to remember. Um for example, if you're talking about the the eighties, uh like uh we have like many economical economic and, and political movements. Uh, like for example, in the eighties, uh, uh, well, I, I don't remember this because I was not born. But we had similar situation uh, in which everyone <laughs> was a millionaire, and then our coin crashed. Uh, and uh, it was uh when the when the banks uh were um were declared private. Uh, so uh, this was before it happened. Uh, but the effects were failed like long long time after that uh the the banks were mm, some of the banks were, were were declared uh like part of the of the of the state so this was like huge um uh, also another thing i was not born uh, yet born but my mother was pregnant with me and this is uh we had a very big earthquake it was 8.1 in Richter scale in Mexico City. So my parents remember this and, and uh, the the city was destroyed. Really, it was it was crashed. And uh, my they, they they joke with me because they say like it was the announcement that I was going to be born. <laughs> and uh, many, many people <laughs> died. We, we always commemorate this date is the 19th of September. And uh, it was not only in Mexico City, but um, it was in other areas near the city. On the 86th, uh, we had the first uh, World Cup, soccer World Cup in Mexico. Uh, again, I don't remember these, but uh, it was won by Argentina and Maradona, so super, super famous that. Uh, then uh, when, when I was growing up, uh, I remember like some uh, scandals about like the the elections, presidential elections. Uh, in in Mexico, you have to understand that we had uh, the same political party ruling like for seventy years, and they rule because they were corrupt and they like uh, made uh, things with the with the elections. So uh, people always knew who will win the, the presidential elections. Someone from this party. Uh, there was a candidate that uh, from this party, but he was like more progressive and trying to make things different. And I was a child and I remember it was a big scandal because they killed him, like publicly, publicly shoot him in one of his uh, campaign events. Uh, one of the things I remember was in 1994, we have like a special commercial agreement with um United States and Canada, and they it's about like the taxes that they charge for the for the commerce. So I remember lots of uh, public demonstrations in, in 
pro and, and against this treaty. Because some people say like it would be detrimental for our country, some people were in favor. Uh, and a lot of the things I remember, uh, it's like uh, almost in the 2000s, uh, we have uh, the, the largest university went on, on strike and uh, it was like almost a year and, and, and millions of students were without classes. So this was like a huge blow to their education. I, I remember this. Then uh, same year, almost in 2000, for the first time in 70 years, another party won the elections. This uh, new candidate promised like, of course, like, like other politicians, we will improve the situation, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it was not good. After that, we had on the 2000s, uh, the 2008, I don't know if you had this in Ukraine, it was like a world economical crisis. So uh, probably you you had this in your countries. I don't know. And from that on, what else? Um, legalization of uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, what else? Uh, the ruling party came back, the pandemics. This is what I remember, like if you ask me in terms of my 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 his the history of my country. And and of course, uh there are good points and, and bad points. Uh if you ask me like in terms of fashion or something, we have um, I think that we are very influenced by um by, by United States culture, but at some point, like in the 90s, there was this new style that was like a fusion between Mexican elements and American elements. I don't know if you saw this picture, maybe you don't. It's called uh, Selena. Selena. It, she was a very famous um, Tex-Mex uh, singer. She was assassinated by her manager. Uh, but she was like super, super big trend. They even made a movie with Jennifer Lopez. Uh, and, and all the girls were dressing like these. Let me find a picture of her so you can see the style. In a bustier. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you, you saw literally, you went into the street and you saw the girls in bustiers in the street. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I was uh, like, um, uh, I had many uh like aunts that were like fifth two or three years older than me and they were like super influenced by her uh, so uh let me show her style of dress so you literally saw people dressing like like this and and because it's it's like latin latin style and 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 you listen to her songs uh on the radio all all the time so do you know about her sandy yeah, I saw the movie. It was great. I remember that movie. It was very sad. <laughs> and, yeah, it's 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 really sad. But uh, the songs, I, I mean, if you, uh, I can I can still like sing the lyrics. Not because I like them, but because I, I I I know these songs. So how can I share this? Okay. Uh, because I I I know the songs. They they pass it all the time in the radio. So look. This, this was her style. With this, I don't know what's the name of this cap that she wore, but you saw this cap like by millions in the street. Uh, but this is the Latin style. These big earrings that she that she wore. Uh, this is these are elements of Latin culture. So I don't know if you guys in Ukraine ever probably not listened about her. Uh, let uh, Mexican music wasn't like we didn't know anything mm -hmm. about Mexican mm -hmm. music in nineties. Like we show, we saw first uh, uh, TV shows like from uh, Brasilia, Brazilian <laughs> TV shows, <laughs> and like. But maybe we saw a uh, also Mexican TV shows. Yes, I I had some colleagues uh, here in Mexico, Ukrainians, that were telling me. Like um, some names of TV, uh, Maria, Maria, yes, Maria. Yes. 
this is Mexican, <laughs> guys. Oh my god, this is Mexican. And and there is the the, the I never saw these shows because they are they are like uh soap operas. But there was a very very famous uh soap opera uh, here in Mexico that was called uh Los Ricos también lloran. Uh, like uh the rich also cry and i believe also cry and the rich also cry it was, <laughs> it was oh, very yeah. popular oh my god <laughs> <laughs> why do we send our soap operas and you don't send yours to us to, 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 <laughs> we didn't like, have any we didn't have actually like we bought all these uh, soap operas uh, mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. they was were really very very popular and uh, mm-hmm. some uh, people said that when they were translated on TV mm-hmm. the rate of uh, um, robbing houses was lower because all people were busy watching Mexican <laughs> yeah that's true that's true Mexicans, that's Mexican soap operas are like an institution really we have well uh, right, right now, I, I, I am happy to say that we are like moving a little bit uh, into progress. Uh, but the, <laughs> uh, in the past, we had channels dedicated to this. So 24 hours, uh, all, all, all these channels. Uh, this is part also of our history because uh, I was telling you that we had one ruling party. So in, in theory, it's democracy but in in practice everything that was like on the news uh like uh on the on the tv was approved was uh, had to be in line with the party you could not like uh, in the news for example start telling like this and that is 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 corrupt we had these issues but you cannot say that everything it's like the party is working the party is doing fine and uh People actually saw these. Uh, if if you look like at the official, uh, like uh, TV TV schedule, it's like, okay, we have some movies. It's 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 clean, but uh, really there were some uh, filmmakers, writers that were like outside this line of the party. So, you had their their uh, access to their jobs. Uh, I mean, to their works like uh, films, TV shows, but it was not like super advertised in, in, in TV. So as an alternative, you have these uh, soap operas. Uh, some of these soap operas have topics that you wouldn't expect to hear in the news or, or to see in an official communication. So this was one of the ways people like was, depends really? on what you see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. This was one of the ways in which people were like, uh, I wouldn't say protesting, but being aware of these situations. Like, talk, t- t- uh, maybe if you had someone who has a, an addiction problem, if you have someone who who is corrupt, uh, the more uh, the, the more liberal the society became, of course, that these soap operas changed. But these, these that you refer to are the classics, like uh, in the soap opera uh, culture. Uh, and, and I know that uh, they were sold not only to, to Eastern Europe, but also to other countries as well. I remember this uh, soap opera, Wild Rose. Rosa Salvaje. Uh, it was ec- extremely popular that uh, Ukrainian girls uh, got their first uh, TV crush. <laughs> yes. and, and my grandmom also had her first TV yes. crush in her 70s years. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I remember this, uh, this uh, TV show. There was uh, another... I am trying to remember the the name of this uh I what was uh this this soap opera there was this uh I, I remember this actor his name was uh Eduardo Palomo I don't know if it's uh still if he's still alive 
but he was a, a, a in this uh soap opera. I'm trying to remember the, the name of the soap opera. Ah, yeah, Wild Heart, Corazón Salvaje. And I remember like <laughs> every woman literally having a crush with him because of the character he he portrayed. Because it was a man with long hair and an earring. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find a picture for for you. And he was mostly sober, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, no, no. He he looked like a, you know, this is like the um, like the plot of the of the soap opera. He looks like a barbarian, but in his heart, he is like a gentleman or something mm, like that. No, I, 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 I understand. I understand. <laughs> Uh, and we have like the antagonist who uh, is like a gentleman, but in his heart he's like a barbarian or something like that. And they put oh. this in. A, they filmed this like in um, in in Mexico. Uh, like it, this comes from the Spanish period. Uh, we have like huge states which are called haciendas. So they filmed this like in uh, in in an hacienda, and they put like uh, clothes from that era. Blah blah blah. And, this was like just to to get the attention of the people. So the guy I'm talking uh, about is the guy on the left, the guy who is with the blonde woman. This is the guy I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, because of Mexican uh, TV shows, um, oh, we uh, uh, we call it our own houses, fazenda. Fazenda. <laughs> But fazenda, fazenda yes. is fazenda is yes. like Portuguese word, and you have actually Portuguese word fazenda. And, and oh yes, <laughs> and like when so I'm came to fazenda, I'm like, oh my god, you speak Ukrainian, but you call this in your house fazenda. Yes. <laughs> in 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 Spanish we say hacienda, hacienda. Uh huh. And this and, is the guy. Uh, uh, and the name Julio become very popular because uh, uh -huh. where I see this face, it's so common. I don't know. It's like in, in my subconsciousness, I see all these people. Oh, God. <laughs> so, really? So, uh, yeah, so it's so common for me. Like, like um, uh, Julio is this, uh, uh, become very popular in Ukraine, but we use only yes, um, two uh, wild heart, yes. um, uh, and we use this name only to um, let's say obrazit him someone uh, offend. because like offend. Uh, to offend someone because Julio it's fine uh, in first syllable it's like Ukrainian cursed word for uh -huh. um, oh, penis oh, <laughs> yes we know it <laughs> I know it. it's become this, because of this, actually uh, TV shows. In Spanish, uh, Julio is uh, the name of, of a man, but also depending on the context, it is the month, the name of the month. It is um, Lipen, Lipen, this month in Spanish, Lipen. It's called July? Julio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Julio, this is the name. So, so I'm already when people say Putin and Julio, that they they using a term from Spanish soap operas. No, 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 no. It's another. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's another. That's what Spanish no, no, would be different. For foreigners, <laughs> yes, it could sound alike, but actually they sound yes. very different. Yes, it's it very different, and it's a different um, uh, origins uh, of this mm -hmm. word. So it uh, has uh, nothing in common with Spanish language because mm -hmm. we uh, like um, respect <laughs> I know. other languages. <laughs> I know. That's why it's because I believe it actually uh, in Spanish we write Julio like with a J and, and we pronounce Julio. Julio. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, mm -hmm. the word that you're saying, I believe it's written with a different letter. At the beginning, which has a totally different sound from who. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if we, yeah. <clears throat> and, so I think and, I may have uh, just got this video banned. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 we, no, no, no. We didn't pronounce this uh, uh, curse word. No, no, no. Yeah. 
but all understand what we are talking about. <laughs> yes, actually, the 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 month before July is called Junio, so we have Junio, and then we have Julio. Mm -hmm. Guys, <laughs> yes, I know. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, and you know, Cherven, da? Cherven. Cherven, yes, Cherven. And you know, Cherven. we uh, speak, uh, speak almost, uh, uh, we talk almost one hour, and we talk mm -hmm. only about 90s. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and 2000s uh, was like uh, even more uh, um, rich on events, more mm -hmm. eventual. Uh, so, but uh, 90s already, like, we have so much, like, we live in different part of Earth, but in the same time, we uh, share uh, the same memories. And we all was brainwashed by uh, Mexican soap operas. <laughs> you know, you, you have discovered our secret plan to take control of the world. Tell them soap operas. And then they start mm -hmm. speaking Spanish and finding Spanish in their language. You know, mm -hmm. that's the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, for example, in the, in the 2000s, it, it was not in 2000, but I remember Movie Matrix. And also here we had like more visibility of Japanese animation. So we have like... Uh, different uh i would say like subcultures in in mexico mm -hmm. uh, people who uh there's a word for them uh they're called otakus so people who are mm -hmm. super fans mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. japanese animation so we have like for example em i don't know how to pronounce in english emos but we say emos in spanish so these people yes. that dress <laughs> in black <laughs> Uh, and are like this oh. we have oh. like like the fans of japanese animation we had also around this time some remaining fans of of selena mm. and chicano culture chicano are like um like a mix of of american and mexican and um uh, they are like like gangs uh, it's not so good to be with these people uh the equivalent i think would be like a gopniks maybe something mm. of that mm -hmm. kind uh we have our own versions of course um uh, and uh, <laughs> we had like okay let me let me show you like a, a version of this but i've learned that this chicano culture it's like super popular in some parts of japan people actually trying to dress like this uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, in Japan and I am like what really uh, it has for example this is like a traditional uh, for this culture if you see in this man's chest there is a tattoo and in this this tattoo is the virgin so this is like if you see this it's Mexican Mexican mm -hmm. uh, element. It, it's religious element, but um, people have incorporated like part of culture. So this is like I'm trying to show you the actual picture. We have a legend about this actually. Let me. So uh, this is very important element of Mexican culture, because you know, like for example, in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, people. Um, well, uh, when Spanish came, they they had like these representations of the Virgin Mary, and this looks European. And and Mexico is really diverse, but it's not like European country. We are different. So mm -hmm. uh, the legend uh, it says that uh, the when uh, Indians were conquered by by a uh, Spanish. Uh, of course, they had like these uh, persons uh, who were like Indians, like the original uh, like uh, settlers here. And you can see this picture of this man. So uh, the legend says that one, one day this man who is an Indian uh, was in, like in a, in a hill near Mexico City. 
and she and he received like this vision of this lady, the lady that you see is the virgin, and the virgin uh, asked him like to build a chapel on this uh, on this hill. Uh, he went, uh, he was like a very devout man. He went, he told the priest, the priest did not believe him. He received this vision several times. And the last time uh, he told the this apparition, like, they don't believe me. Uh, I've, I've shared your instructions. They don't believe me. And and she told him like, okay, take some roses. And, and, and the legend says that he found the roses. It was not the time for the roses to be blooming or, or, or to even be there in that hill, but he found them. And he put them in this special cloak that he wears that it's called Tilma. So um he he put them like to uh get them, like like to transport them. And he went again with the priests. And when he was like showing them, like let, letting letting the roses drop on the floor, the image of the virgin appeared. And then they build the church and they have this image, blah, blah, blah. But this, this virgin is um, an element of Mexican culture. You will find mm -hmm. it. If you go, for example, to the States, where there's large Mexican population, you will find it. You will see it like in this man, like this tattoo. You will see it again. So uh, it, it's, it's just elements of our culture. And uh, this, this man, for example... Let me show you how how women look in this culture. I'm sorry, guys. Probably you you knew about this, or 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 maybe you you didn't. No, do you have something similar in Ukraine? Mm, we didn't see picture yet. Ah, okay. <laughs> so. No, but I mean like these subcultures or these groups, like I am saying. Like uh, these like uh, groups of uh, tattooed people, like mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. uh, like we didn't in early two thousands. We also have this emos, we have <laughs> uh, uh, otaku's, uh, we have punks, we have rappers. And uh, like mm -hmm. uh, all this subculture, they like uh, uh, conflicted to each other. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> especially like uh, rock uh, 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 rock groups are conflicted with rappers, and they often. No, it, it was <laughs> it was actually not not in after millennium. It was in nineties, and uh, the question, "What do you listen to?" could be the start for a fight, for a very very serious mm -hmm. fight. And people who listen to Sepultura uh, uh, fought those who listened to Nirvana, and that mm -hmm. was in nineties. Uh, and uh, those who listened to, oh. Let me remember this. Uh, how much this the fish? Uh, not scorpion oh scooter. I, scooter. I, I listened to this song yesterday. Oh my god! I was listening <laughs> to this song yesterday. I'm old. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and that 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 time, and after uh, the millennium, when all that uh, ghosts and emos appeared, uh, there were not so many conflicts. Uh, in Crimea, apparently. I don't know whether they were in different parts of Ukraine. My friend um, uh, uh, told me the story that he was like this metal guy, yes? And like uh, he told like uh, when the uh, group uh, uh, with the, his uh, group of guys traveled in um, train, and in uh, in this train uh, came one rap boy. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> he survived, but it was dangerous trip for this guy. <laughs> but uh, uh, in two thousands, uh, like after I uh, um, ended a school. I like I jumped with uh, into university life, and also I became an emo. <laughs> I had this weird hairstyle <laughs> with this <laughs> bangs, <laughs> but but I uh, had 
not uh, uh, black hair, I had a ginger because uh, I uh, yeah. black, so I made my hair ginger and like it w- I was very bright emo. But yes, I, emo. I, yes, yes, I wow. was <laughs> They were either, either black or uh, uh, pink, not ginger. <laughs> I it was wasn't ginger. usual. <laughs> yes. And also, I listened to Tokyo Hotel. It was like a uh, most popular emo band in Europe. And they uh, sing it to in German. Soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It was popular that time. Not <laughs> only between uh, in emo subculture. Mm-hmm. So, uh, evanescence, of course, of course, we all live in to evanescence, and like uh, this, like, um, who sing it? This, uh, oh, I forgot, forgot. The uh, Linkin Park mm-hmm. orchestra, Corn. orchestra music, the orchestra music, metal orchestra music, they made Nightwish, Nightwish, yes, Nightwish, Nightwish. <laughs> <laughs> and Rasmus and him. Mm. <laughs> oh boy! You know when uh, I listened to him in first in like in my uh, when I become student already, and uh, um, now I think if if I were I were little bit younger, little bit, I were I maybe were very obsessed with him because like it's a deep voice <laughs> <laughs> and his personality his style and it's like this guy with makeup and he's smoking in time when he's singing but thank god <laughs> thank to god i saw this when i was a little bit older so for <clears throat> It's good music for me, but it's not affected me that much that I uh, maybe choose partner uh, who will look like uh, like Will Levalo. <laughs> oh, after, after the session, I will listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Which album? <laughs> Uh, I I don't know. Maybe I don't listen to album. I listen to some some tracks. Uh, like um, oh, I forgot all of the all of them. Um, oh. Reservate romance. Uh, enjoying sorrow. Enjoying what sorrow. Was... Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Emo did didn't die inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that teenager emo still alive. <laughs> I I remember when I was in, in school, we had like I would say three main groups. Like on one side we have like being of course this is like my own. Uh, classification it's not not like real but on one side we had all the metal the metal heads uh people who were emos uh these uh people who were darks uh in spanish we call them darketos so people with these like huge really long vinyl boots uh like long uh black uh <laughs> uh, overcoats uh with uh, their face painted in white their lips are are, are black uh and as you can imagine I'm like it's <laughs> it's hot in here but you are wearing this okay uh we had those then we had uh the ones who um were more into like boy bands and in this category we have like the national boy band and of course the American boy bands. Uh, and then we had the other kind of who, who listened to some uh, Mexican artists, uh, but in this time they, they were like not, not being boy bands, but um, 
like some groups who were like doing things uh, with uh, ska, with rock, with pop, but maybe singing some uh, things that were not um, usual. Uh, I remember, for example, this group that's called Mana, which is like this um, food from the Bible, Mana. Uh, and they had a song which was really, really popular, uh, which was about those who disappear, but not those who disappear uh, because uh, they want to, but those who are forced to disappear because of political reasons. And, and the song is basically dialogues of the family of these people looking for them. Where, where did they go, those that are the missing ones? So this is like not so popular because it's related to politics, to crime, to the situation around. Uh, also, we had some uh, Argentinian rock bands, uh, Los Fabulosos Cadillac, it's super, super famous. And they had uh, like really, really good songs. Uh, I mean, like to my taste. Uh, it's it's Argentinian rock. It's in Spanish, but the songs are really really good. Uh, one of the songs from Los Fabulosos Cadillacs it's called Matador, Killer, and uh, it's also in that same line as the song from Mana. So this is what I remember, like from from the school. Uh, from from uh, of course we have also like um, uh, these this uh like uh dance music and everything but uh i i i was i i never like really like boy bands uh, i have like my cousins they like this and and we had also solist singers like for example ricky martin chayanne they were super popular here probably you know about oh, them in ukraine ricky martin <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes. <very popular. laughs> Yes, and then we had Shakira, of course, and everyone was dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Shakira began to, to sing in English, and everyone was like, oh, I need to learn English <laughs> to sing mm -hmm. like Shakira. Uh, what else? Uh, but uh, really, I, I think that uh, artists like, for example, Ricky Martin, Chayam, Shakira, maybe they gave some exposure to, to Latin music. We have more, mm -hmm. of course, but uh, let let me say that for example, who is this guy? Uh, Juanes. Uh, the other day, uh, one friend in Ukraine sent me a version of uh, it, it's in, in in Russian. I don't know if it's a uh, a uh, uh, an Ukrainian version of a song by Juanes, and I was like surprised, like really, you have a translation of a a, a song from Juanes. And it's a really beautiful song. Uh, let me see if I can find what he sent me, and I will put it in the chat. But if you listen, do you remember the name of the song? Adios, le pido. It's uh, in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, I know, yeah. but I want to find. It, it was very letter. popular. Yes, and, and this and this. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the the song that he sent me was uh, La Camisa Negra, the black shirt. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And and this is very very popular song, but uh, he also has one song that it's Adios Le Pido, which is like a prayer that he's making to to God. It's uh, it's not like in the religious aspect, but uh, it's 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 very. I I think that it can make you understand a bit of Latin culture because uh, basically he is saying like I will ask to God. Uh, that um for example uh that my mother doesn't die that my father remembers me um uh, that my people i mean like latin culture hispanic people can write can raise up and and can progress uh but when you hear this in spanish it's like so emotional uh and then he sings to the person he loves you know we are like really really passionate people um uh, and um uh, he says like um uh, that if I die, I die of love, and uh, that my heart belongs to your voice, and that I on that if I only have one more minute to live, this this minute is to love you and to give you my whole heart, uh, and and it's not like a, in as I say like in a religious sense, but do you understand a bit of uh, our thinking if you listen to the song? Mm -hmm. 
that's my opinion of course mm -hmm. but then, in let me look for it yes <laughs> in 2000s uh, uh, we had like this ukrainian uh, band who become very popular especially in 2007 uh, it's boombox and like uh, i remember when my, i was in first year in the um, university and they uh, song Wachtoram was so popular that uh, we was obsessed about this song and uh, now a uh, person uh, singer uh, of this band is in ukrainian army mm -hmm. uh, also uh, we have this national ukrainian um, rock band okan elze because they from the 90s um they, like this band is made music from 90s and uh, uh, Vyacheslav Vokarchuk uh, also visited warriors on front line and uh, sings to them uh, so uh, and uh, one of the songs of Okan Elze become like mm, hymn uh, or symbol of uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian resistance, and uh, um, and it's like two thousand uh, uh, two thousands. Um, it was very bright period, but um. Mm, uh, Ukrainian society uh, um, become more self-aware of that it's our oh, we are Ukrainian. Also, in two thousand, it's very important because I read it on a book, um, cultural expansion, and uh, in nineties, uh, Ukrainian TV had a lot of Ukrainian cultural product but in 2000 um russia became uh, started its own invasion in cultural influence in uh, ukraine so uh in 2000 in 2000 a lot of ukrainian singers uh, started to sing in, in russian just to have uh, um, the opportunity to sell it's a uh, product uh, their product uh, to the russia or kazakhstan or um, georgia so uh, if 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 we look back we will notice it how influence of uh, russia became stronger after 2004 because in this period, Ukrainians show their uh, um, political will because they've protested uh, 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 because of uh, result of voting, because uh, election was... Vitaly, how it's... Выборы были подтасовані. Янукович, Ющенко... The elections were made up, and uh, the difference between uh, the election results and the exit polls were very uh, serious. It was very mo much difference between them. And uh, that its election was made up, uh, the first person who told on Ukrainian TV the truth, uh, the truth, it was a person who... Uh, use uh, a language of science, science language uh, for uh, people who uh, don't hear. And she uh, told uh, when this uh, results um, shows of elections in quotes, yeah, and uh, she showed that it's all fake, it's not true. So, uh, and after it was first of uh, a political protest against. Um, results of uh, elections, and uh, uh, we, uh, we we had re-elections, and we choose another president. And it's president. This president is very important because 
he uh, uh, he likes uh, bees and honey. And uh, in Ukrainian um, internet culture, we have this flash mob. When we saw pictures of honey or bees, we uh, in uh, quote tweets, uh, I, we, we need to um, write uh, uh, this president's um, name. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of his president? Yushchenko. <laughs> Oh. What's the, his last name? And we have to, uh, to write it and to pick it letter by letter. So each uh, answer, each reply, is the another letter. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So if, if you see that Ukrainians post only one letter, it's because we are trying to uh, uh, make this Yushchenko thread in. <laughs> I, I, I... I, I I read about one I don't remember if it was a presidential a president or, or a presidential candidate that was point, poisoned. Was uh, it was him. That, that was it was him. him. It was him. It was him. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it it was at this time that you were telling that he was poisoned. Yes. Yes, yes. It was at this time. Two thousand four, two thousand uh, like uh, we had this orange revolution. We all were in this orange scarf. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember even in school, uh, we have this uh, 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 confrontation against uh, that one who uh, cheer uh, Yushchenko and that one who for party of regions. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, so first was Yanukovych, and then mm -hmm. successor was Yushchenko. Yes, mm -hmm. but okay. Mm -hmm. But and after, mm -hmm. but after was again Yanukovych. After ah, ah, okay. So Yanukovych was in two periods, and this uh, was... he was prime minister. He was a prime uh -huh. minister mm -hmm. of Kushma's uh, presidential. Um, conglomerate, I can say, because it wasn't just government. Uh, mm -hmm. It was more of a mafia that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. he um, was uh, going to be elected. And you, you, all the uh, it was made up and Maidan started after it revealed it made up. And Yushchenko was poisoned uh, to be banned from elections. And Maidan grew even more after that. Mm -hmm. I think it was the same at with uh, same not the same, but uh, it was similar situation to the candidate that wa I was telling you about. Ours was killed, uh, and yours was poisoned. Uh, it 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 was when they were trying at least uh, in here that he was trying to fight the establishment, and I think that this was why he was killed. And uh, in the end. Yushchenko became your your president for a for a while or not? Mm -hmm. For one term. Okay. And he was uh, pro European and pro NATO, and Yanukovych was pro Russian. So uh, that mm -hmm. was not just uh, establishment war; mm -hmm. it was uh, one of the iterations of uh, the war with Russia, with Empire. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. I understand correctly that this Yanukovych is still alive? It's in, in Russia? Yes, or... yes he is oh. in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know he... if he is alive because we can, uh, cannot see any mm -hmm. uh, anything mm -hmm. from him, but mm -hmm. it's believed that he is. Mm -hmm. And I will explain why we uh, Ukrainians choose that Yanukovych because unfortunately, when mm -hmm. Yushchenko was president in this, uh, 2008, uh, 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 there was an uh, economical crisis mm -hmm. and Ukrainians like uh, didn't uh, uh, add two and two and didn't understand that it doesn't his fault of mm -hmm. uh, a crisis global... of economic mm -hmm. yes it was global okay. crisis but uh, after uh, like uh, people was disappointed on his economical politics but it it was it actually wasn't fault of party of or Yushchenko because it's 
global crisis and after Ukrainians choose it, uh, Yushchenko or Yanukovych and uh, uh, after we have this problem uh, with uh, because he chose it a pro-Russian vector of uh, um, Ukrainian uh, politic and economic life and yeah, like Ukrainians uh, didn't like it, it much <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, okay I remember, uh, I am trying to, to remember, I remember seeing in the news also a woman uh, with braids around her mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. A blonde woman. Oh, uh -huh. I hate her so much. Oh, because oh. she's still a, a politician in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we have this um, a law about med medical uh, marijuana, marijuana for uh, mm -hmm. uh, to for people mm -hmm. who has this chronic PTSD mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and she against this law because oh, we all became narcomans <laughs> mm -hmm. I am and we have a lot of problems with with her but uh, yeah mm -hmm. she's still alive um, and she still work in Ukraine parliament Okay, I, I remember. It is because... believed. It is believed that she is uh, protecting that alcohol lobby, and uh, that's oh. why uh, cannabis is banned. Uh, so, so she supports uh, alcohol instead of cannabis. Yes. Al <laughs> alcohol companies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I I remember because of this president that was poisoned because I remember seeing the pictures of, of his face like they they used to show like the pictures at, at least in the news before and after like uh, he had some uh, I believe consequences in his face like some scars mm -hmm. or something. Yes, yes yeah yes. he was he was a handsome man and after that he became not that pleasant looking oh okay <laughs> Uh, is he still alive or, or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Nice. We oh, have okay. almost all our presidents alive, uh, but the first one died last year. Yeah, yeah. Kravchuk. yeah. And other, Kravchuk, it's... Uh, yeah, other presidents are alive. Guys, uh, um... your history is like really, really. Uh, interesting. It, it it's not <laughs> like it's not like easy to understand, but it's really really interesting. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of events, <laughs> and yes, you have many many things in your history. And it's just modern history, <laughs> not ancient ones. And, yes, and, <laughs> and this is a subject for years. the next for the next session. Can you please tell us about your ancient history? <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> I, I, I now that that Yana was telling about Purim Sultan. There is this magazine. I don't know if you if you know it. It's Reader's Digest. It's small magazine, American magazine. And um, my family, my my aunts, used to collect like loads of this magazine because it has like small articles which you can read. And I remember I, I reading as a child about about this, and um, also later, uh, I was reading some some letters or something that she wrote to her husband because, if I understand correctly, she converted to marry the sultan, and she was writing like these really passionate letters of how she she missed him so much, and 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 they were saying this in the article that he loved her so much, so. This is one character of yours, history, I believe. So can you tell us more about other characters, like from your ancient history? Like, for example, can you tell about Bandera? Maybe you... Uh, no, if about her personal letters, it's maybe about one of our hetmans, uh, Mazepa. Oh. Uh, mm. Because... No, no, no. Uh, huh? uh, because, uh, like... Uh, George Gordon Byron uh, wrote a poem about Mazepa, and uh, mm -hmm. Mazepa was very talented. Said he could write own poems, and he mm -hmm. sent it to his young 
wife. <laughs> she uh, was and... much younger than him. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, but but I I am telling about Hurem Sultan. There was ah yes, Hurem Sultan. Yes, yes. Roxolana. Yes, at latest. Yes, Roxolana, Hiram Sultan. He also we have this Turkish TV show about um, mm -hmm. Hiram Sultan. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. She is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is bad bitch, but she is gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. Uh, she, she, I remember because uh, I read this, this and, and for him it means like joyful, like, like the one who is joyful, I believe. And and they were like uh, telling this in the in the article, but can you tell about other other characters like about Bandera, for example? To me, he's interesting because it's it's like word in Spanish, and I want to know more. Yes. About it. <laughs> okay. First of all, uh, there are no actually biography of Bandera, mm -hmm. so we we don't know uh, much about him. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but he is important because he fighted against uh, Soviets and against uh, uh, Nazi, and mm -hmm. uh, because of that he spent it almost uh, all uh, Second World War in the concentration camp, mm -hmm. and like uh, and he became a symbol of like our own way. So we didn't want to, uh, like uh, Ukrainian nationalists didn't want to be and no part of Soviets, no part of uh, um, uh, German, just wanted to have our own way. And uh, even mm -hmm. after uh, Second World War ended, uh, uh, Ukrainian nationalists fight against uh, Soviets till 70s. Uh, uh, so, but Bandera died in Paris, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he uh, uh, didn't influence the uh, Ukrainian movement uh, uh, much, but he became a symbol or symbol, symbol of and... self determination. Yes, yes. Uh, did, did he die in Paris or in Munich? Uh, as uh, I, I think this. Uh, Petluro died in Paris. In Paris. Was, yes, Petluro yeah. died in Paris and uh, Mahno. Both, okay. both were killed by uh, Soviet uh, mm -hmm. intelligence uh, intels. Yeah. yeah. And Special it, service. It, it, yes, it is a detail. Um, of course, uh, as in, in Ukraine and in, in other countries, the war collaborate collaborators who worked mm -hmm. on Nazi German, but mm -hmm. it was another part of Ukrainian nationalists, it's called um, Melnikivti, but you can mention that you, uh, Russians don't, uh, didn't use Melnikivti, they called Ukrainian Banderivti, Banderites. Uh, uh, it's because uh, Bandera fought um, not uh, against Soviets too. Because how Ukrainians dare to have own opinion in uh, own vision of its future, of, of their future. So for they didn't use this name of actually collabor collaborators with Nazi, Melnikivti, mm -hmm. uh, who like only 20,000 of them was. Mm -hmm. uh, and use only a name of Pandera. Actually, Bandera was a symbol and he was an ideologist. So he um, built all that ideology of Ukrainian, true Ukrainian nationalism, that to be separate from Moscow and separate from other countries, from uh, Poland and every, any other countries, and to be uh, on our own land. And as his ideology was very uh, strict and very strong, Soviet mm -hmm. put all their efforts to just uh, destroy his uh, image and his mm -hmm. disguise to uh, present him as a traitor to Ukrainians mm -hmm. also. And many or and uh, there were mm -hmm. also some uh, special service agents who dressed mm -hmm. uh, into their uniform of Ukrainian nationalists and uh, nationalists. Um, they robbed uh, some villages on their behalf. Like it's uh, Ukrainian nationalists mm -hmm. who do mm -hmm. this uh, um, vandalism. To discredit, not, uh, to discredit uh, yeah, yeah, 
yeah yeah exactly exactly oh okay mm -hmm. yes yes we have like very interesting history of uh, ukrainian nationalism and for ukrainians it's like it's often always um uh, defended nationalism because like ukrainian national idea is just fuck off <laughs> we <laughs> just <laughs> want to live in our own country in our own rules uh, mm -hmm. in our own order so mm -hmm. it's literally Ukrainian ideology of Ukrainian nationalism. Fuck off. <laughs> Guys, I need to go, but I don't want to. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I also can need talk to about this some because other time. My, my, my phone dying. <laughs> so I have only 10%. <laughs> <to> <laughs> <laughs> but maybe That's... you can tell about Petyure. Also, who is this person? Petyure, is it man or woman? Uh, Petlura, it's man. A man. Uh, and yes, it, it, it's 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 interesting moment. Uh, Petlura, it's one of uh, ideologist and political of Ukrainian National Republic. Its uh -huh. country was uh, created after uh, collapse of um, Russian Empire in the nineteen seventies, nineteen nineties, and it's it's the same methodic. After this, Ukrainian nationalists call it uh, Petlurevsky. But mm -hmm. after the Second World War, uh, Ukrainian nationalists call it uh, Banderevsky. So it's always... <laughs> <laughs> Russians just uh, change the labels. <laughs> and before Petlura, the main demon, the main demon for Russians was Mazepa. Yes, Mazepa, because he betrayed... Petro, uh, Petro, uh, second, Petro second, and he chooses this Swedish, Swedish king, and like, and you, they call it as Mazepinci. <laughs> there is even a play about this, no? A play or, or, or something, some, some literature work, no? I believe. Yeah. I, I have listened mm -hmm. to this name Mazepa before and linked to a. The Mazepa is it. a poem. Is uh -huh. Byron has a poem Mazepa. Mm. Okay. And uh, because uh, when he was young, he has very mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, rich personal life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was a. He was attractive, he was educa well educated, and mm -hmm. he has all these affairs with uh, uh, rich uh, Polish wives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and okay. yes, he is also because of that, uh, uh, romantic uh, poets, as uh, Byron uses mm -hmm. his uh, um, uh, person uh, to describe in his poem because it's very romantic. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Guys, I promise. And I will actually, in thing. in Russian in Russian literature, <laughs> uh, the guy that followed Byron, that uh, what wanted to be like Byron, uh, their the main uh, the main thing that the main pride of Russian literature uh, wrote uh, also a poem about Mazepa, but uh, depicting him as a bad guy. Mm -hmm. So it was uh -huh. almost that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, at the same time it was it was uh -huh. ninety second. Guys, I'm sorry. Okay. I, have to leave, but I will read. Yeah, I yeah, promise. Yeah. You. <laughs> we That's all need to leave because my phone died. Also. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, we'll, we'll pick it up next week. Maybe we can um continue because this has been really interesting. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much. Series. <laughs> no shit, thank for you guys. History lessons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always welcome. Always welcome. <laughs> Okay, guys, have a nice day. It was pressure to listening. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Likewise. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.